Hello and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tech Exec Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Aviv Ben Yosef, and our subject today is Coders Without Borders. As I'm sitting here in front of my computer and recording this episode for you, I have in front of me one of my chessboards. Why? Because I'm learning some openings. And I realize that now with the Queen's Gambit, some of you might be a little more open to hearing about chess analogies. So I'm going to use that as long as I can until that effect wears off. So I have this chess set in front of me. And one thing that I noticed that a bunch of amateurs like myself always miss and that, you know, those super grandmasters and, of course, computers doing chess never miss is the fact that some pieces can have an effect that's far-reaching. So, me, I never noticed that some bishop all way back on the other side of the board can hit a specific square that I want to get to. Because it's just so far away that I miss it. We get this myopic thing where we focus on what's close. We tend to look around us and not look far enough. And before I stretch this analogy too thin, I do want to say that this is a problem that I see repeatedly in many, many types of R&D organizations. And that is because we miss out on the fact that our bright, talented people can have an amazing impact not just on the rote delivery for product tasks. What am I talking about? So this is a concept that I call Coders Without Borders. And it appears in my soon-to-be-published book. If you've listened to the previous episode, you know that the book, The Tech Executive Operating System, is going out on April. And in it, actually right in the first chapter, I talk about defining the roles of tech executives and the different kinds of them. And to provide you with a good tool set that allows you to make your own decisions, to create your own operating system, I don't want you to memorize a bunch of stuff I've written and just follow them because that means you are not developing instincts. It's nice to use it as a crutch, but you have to understand the underlying concepts. You have to understand the strategy for being an executive. That's what I'm talking about. And so I provide you with this list of what I call the axioms of effective leadership. Principles that should serve you as guiding values whenever you have to come up with your own approach to a solution for an issue you have not encountered before. And one of those is coders without borders. It is the concept that says that engineers can provide tremendous impact by helping the entire ranks of the company. So as I said before, product delivery might make up most of your work, but never underestimate the giant leap forward that other departments can gain by having a couple of engineers dedicated to solving their problems for a week or two. And that's it. That's one of the concepts that I think should be imbued in every leader. Do not get hooked to merely delivering on whatever roadmap you committed to. That's, you know, when we have the yearly reviews, there's meets expectations, and then there's exceeding expectations, right? If you're simply delivering the roadmap, you're just barely meeting expectations. Where are you exceeding? Because I know you're not just aiming to be an average executive. You're not aiming to create an average organization. And one way to do that is to make sure your entire team understands that there are no borders. They can help everyone in the company if needed. These coders without borders end up creating more and more tech capital. And as you amass more capital, you have more ways of working more productively across every single department. You have the ability to get things done faster, to do things your competitors can't. And this eventually forms this huge moat of competitive advantage. And that all comes from your innovative assets that are created by your team and you will not be able to do that as well if you are siloed if you're only thinking about what product has asked you to do or worse what product has tasked you to do so for example think 
Can you actively be working with people from sales and marketing to provide them with better integrations to tools so they can track whatever they're doing better? Or maybe you can create tools that provide them with insights. I've seen several very successful companies create tools that with some clever data science and engineering work actually created tools that helped the salespeople compile better pipelines. You can do stuff like automation marketing to help marketing get stuff done faster and without needing to constantly have their hands held by engineers. You don't have to write every single email for them in a template if you provide them with a tool to do that. Again, that's the concept of Coders Without Borders. You don't have to merely get tasks from products saying, implement specific transactional email for this and that. You can take a step back as a leader and notice that these kinds of problems arise again and again. You can talk to your counterpart in marketing and realize that this is something that's actually delaying their work because they have to put things on the roadmap, wait for it to happen, when they just need two hours of an engineer to try something new and try something fast and see if it even works. And because of that, they end up not trying a bunch of stuff because that's a lot of overhead, right? If you create this tool for allowing them to create emails by themselves, boom, no fuss for your people from now till eternity. And all of a sudden, marketing have this huge capability. You've just enabled something they were never able to do before. And that's a real example I've seen a few good times in the past 12 months alone. It's something that I repeatedly see companies realizing that they need to do either by coding it in-house or doing some integration to use some external tool. Whatever it is, this is how you solve problems, not just for your direct customers, those the product is being developed for, but you are doing it at a different level inside your organization to make the entire company better and so solve your clients' problems even better at a whole different level. This is what force multipliers are. And if you don't recall, you can check my episode about engineering force multipliers. And personally, this is one of my core beliefs. I just can't stand the concept of someone focusing solely on whatever currently shows up in their JIRA board. That's good. Again, you have to meet expectations, as I said, but you have to aim to exceed them. Otherwise, why are we waking up in the morning? So, get to it. Accept the fact that you have to create this coders without borders mentality. And you do that by collaborating with your peers and creating a culture where every single person on your team feels comfortable to talk openly with people from other departments and to suggest and openly discuss ideas that they have about improving this. There's a bunch more to talk about when it comes to finding the time to implementing this, and I will talk about that as well down the line as I share some more concepts from the Tech Executive Operating System. That's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you have any questions or comments, my email is in the show notes. I hope you're staying safe with the bunch of variants and mutations that we're seeing with COVID. Personally, I'm scheduled to get my second shot in a couple of days. Very, very grateful about that. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my newsletter. The link is in the show notes. You'll get one article a week, exclusive insights I share nowhere else, and of course, all the information about the upcoming book. Thank you and talk soon.